Hi, everybody. Welcome to this session with Design Lab. Um, my name is Jessica Campbell. I'm going to get us started here as everybody's um, jumping in. Um, if you've been to a Design Lab webinar before, you know the deal. We want you to jump into the chat, say hey, tell us where you're joining from. We're super excited to have you here for this talk today. Um, so Dallas, California, hi, hi, Philly. A lot of we're spread out across the states here so far. I see a Canada in there. Wow, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, we've got all sorts popping in Argentina. I saw one from Argentina. Welcome, everybody. We're so excited to have you here. So we're going to be talking about um, spatial design today with um, Julian Park. Um, I just want to get set a little ground rules here before we get going. Um, so folks, the chat, please use that to talk to one another, or um, if Julian poses a question during the talk, please feel free to answer in the chat. Um, there will be time at the end for some Q&A, so please, um, at the bottom of LiveStorm, when you're on the um, right-hand side there, please tab over to questions to ask your questions. They will get lost if you put them in the chat. I will not see them there. Um, I will be popping back in at the end and looking at the questions that get the most upvotes or most interest, and I will be posing those to Julian. Um, if there are little small questions that are specific for, for design lab, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer those written. But please make sure you ask those questions in the tab um, and get those rolling early. But I'm going to go ahead and, and stop talking. <laughs> I'm going to kick it over to Julian. Um, Julian is the um, CEO and co-founder -found of um, Bezel, which is a um, spatial design tool. So we've got an expert in the house to talk to us about all of this. So Julian, thank you so much for being here. I'll, I'll kick it over to you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Let me share my screen so we can get started here. Um, cool. Awesome. Well, hello from San Francisco. I am seeing all of you from all over the world. Uh, this is so, so exciting. Um, what a world we live in, right? Um, but yeah, today I'm going to be talking about uh, spatial design and how to design for reality, which is not something that you might be used to as a designer in the industry today. Um, I would also like to see, in addition to the city you're from, like what kind of work you do these days, right? So if you're a designer, uh, if you're a UI, UX designer, if you could be an engineer, maybe you're a PM, um, I would love to see that kind of stuff or like what industry you even work in just so I have a better idea of like who's in the call today so I can kind of tailor my my uh, topics for that as well. Okay, so I'm seeing students, design students, UI, UX, architecture. Architecture is a very important part of 3D design, which we're, you know, we're, we're going to go through. PMs, mobile apps, amazing. Architects, technical designer, amazing. Yeah, no, this is... We got a doctor <laughs> in the house, um, UI UX students. Okay, so a lot of like UI UX designers, students, um, architects, some from the XR side, awesome. Okay, this is good, this is good, yeah. So I'll keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, we're just gonna spend a bit of time just talking about spatial design as a topic, as a study, um, and then talk a bit about bezel I did also want to get a bit hands-on and get you all through a quick demo of Bezel too, just so you get a, a taste of, of what it feels like to be working in 3D, to be designing in 3D. Um, and then I'm just going to try to save a bunch of time for Q&A at the end so that you, you, know, you can ask your questions and I'll try my best to answer all of them. All right, so just to get the, the context set, um, before Bezel, I was working at Oculus as an engineer. And you might be familiar with something like this if you've ever tried on like a Quest headset. Um, you know, if you've ever opened the, the device, uh, you, you would see these, these panel menus and you go eyes kind of floating around you. Uh, th this is exactly what I worked on at Oculus. And during that time, I worked a lot with designers. And designers would use tools like Figma to uh, kind of see how the layouts of the panels would look, 
and have a 2D version of how the 3D environment would look like in VR. Um, so it was an interesting experience um, working with designers back then because the tooling, the, the tools that we used were mostly in 2D. And if you wanted to make something in 3D, if you wanted to design in 3D, you would have to work with a Unity developer and they would have to essentially put together an interactive 3D prototype uh, sometimes in C-sharp scripting, um, and then you've got to export this package to different headsets and different builds, and you've got to send them over to different coworkers, and it was just, it was a lot. Um, so, you know, looking at this multi-week process, I was brainstorming with some other folks, like, hey, is there like an easier way to do this, right? Is there, an, is there an easier way to design for 3D spaces and 3D experiences like this? And the answer was, well, not really. So. Long story short, uh, we left Oculus to build Bezel um, because this exactly was what we were experiencing within the 3D world those days, right? Because designers, a lot uh, who were within coming from the product design realm of like websites or mobile apps were, you know, familiar with tools like Figma, which, you know, is amazing for the, those types of products. And then they would hand off these designs to like engineers and they would use uh, coding IDEs like Xcode here um, to build it out. But when we're talking about 3D or uh, spatial design or spatial experiences, yes, we had something like Unity to build out the entire experience and like ship it out as an app. But for the spatial design realm, you know, we didn't really have an easy to use collaborative tool like that. And some of you might remember something a bit more like this, something that felt a bit more manual when you were trying to user test your design with people, right? Because like even today, when you have a UI UX design, you, it, it, you probably want to like build out a prototype to like test how it would work with users and see how the entire uh, onboarding flow works and, and how the app experience looks like and how it feels like. Well, I think we're in a similar stage of manual design and manual prototyping for spatial experiences. So this is an example video of, I mean, it looks a bit silly, but you know, I think it's not too different from the, the mobile world uh, that we're coming in from. And as you might've heard, uh, this summer Apple announced the Vision Pro, right? It's it really is a significant moment, in my opinion, in the evolution of computing overall. Because when you think about the first like personal computers that arrived in the market many decades ago, um, the Macintosh in like 1984, that really got people to think about, okay, what does UI look like, right? Like the, like the OG UIs in the market. Um, and then you got like the iPhone coming in around 2007, and it really changes how you interact with the world because with mobile computing, now you have a portable you know, computer in your pocket and a bunch of work has been done since then till now um, around designing for that little rectangular screen in our pockets, as well as building the best possible apps and the best possible experiences for this kind of device. But now we're in a, another phase of, of hardware um, from Apple's perspective too, right? Because now they're announcing the, the spatial computer and the spatial computing era where designers are now unlocked um, and unleashed beyond this, this rectangular small screen that we all look at and are able to really design for the world around us and the 3D space around us. And this is actually a screenshot from one of their WWDC uh, presentation slides. But you know, I think one thing that this showed me is that a lot of these apps are still somewhat in 2D. And it reminded me of that, that awkward phase back then when the iPad first came out. I don't know if you, you, know, if you remember this at all, but when the iPad first came out, um, a lot of the initial apps uh, downloaded from the app store were like kind of pixelated or at least like a small screen in the center because a lot of the apps were designed and developed for the iPhone screen, right? So you would have to like zoom it out to the larger iPad screen and then it would be like pixelated and kind of awkward to use. 
of course, nowadays, a lot of apps are, are custom made and tailored for the iPad, which is great. And, and I think we're going to experience a similar transition with the apps that we design um, for the spatial computer, because it's inherently in 3D and a lot of these experiences ported over from like iOS or iPad OS are in 2D. So I think we're gonna see a lot of exciting and interesting innovations and design challenges here for the broader community as well. So I think this is really the best possible time to get into a space like this because you're really investing in a career in spatial design for the next like 10, 20 years, right? It, it, you know, it's as if you're investing yourself in mobile app design, like, you know, right after the iPhone came out. And today, you know, we'll be talking about Bezel, which allows designers and the entire design team to really hone in on this kind of 3D spatial design experience beyond the 2D canvas. And at first it could feel a little, you know, strange. It, it could feel a little weird or different from what you're normally doing when you're designing for websites or mobile apps. But if you really think about it, this is where the world is headed towards, right? This is where the hardware is moving and the software or the content rather needs to catch up because for computers like headsets to really, you know, be, be put on people's heads, it, it's going to take a lot of killer apps to, to get people to do that. So the question really comes down to what kind of, what, what kind of experiences can designers uh, create? With something like Bessel. So, I, you know, as an example, let's look at something like Airbnb, right? When you think of Airbnb today, uh, their product is often interfaced through a website like that or like your mobile app. Um, but there aren't too many differences uh, between the two versions, but there are, you know, pretty important differences. But what would Airbnb's app look like for the Apple Vision Pro, right? You know, if they were to build one. Well, that's exactly what a designer um, prototyped using Bezel uh, in this, this little video, where you, you could maybe actually walk into these rooms, you know, if people had like those uh, cameras that can capture rooms, and then walk around them before you book it, right? Before you commit to renting out a whole room or a hotel or a space. What if Airbnb had an app like that that allowed people to easily um, kind of create and, and explore these spaces before buying them or renting them out. And thousands of others, um, other designers have also been creating a bunch of cool experiences for not just AR, VR, but 3D um, games or spatial experiences overall you know, as they're looking forward to this future of spatial hardware. And we've seen some really exciting stuff. And you know, I don't have time today to go over you know, all of them, but I just wanted to kind of show you some, some glimpses of that today as well. Cool. Um, so with that in mind, I wanted to spend a bit of time uh, going through the design tool itself. And then uh, I'm going to try to save up a lot of time at the end for a Q&A and, and to answer any questions that you might have about spatial design overall, you know, the 3D design space, uh, like AR, VR, all that stuff. Um, or you know anything about the Bezel uh, product as well. So for now, uh, you know if, if you're in front of a computer, um, you could go to bezel.it, which is where our uh, product lives, and then there's going to be a try the beta button at the top right. And if you click that, you can quickly create a free account. And if you go through the the onboarding files, um, you don't have to spend too much time on that right now. Uh, you, you can kind of create uh, or go to the, the gallery page. Um, you'll see a gallery tab on the left right here when you're in this file grid page. And then from there, um, you can click on the bezel walkthrough 2.0 file. Um, that will allow you to uh, walk through the onboarding flow with me. And I'll be spending just, you know, a, a bit of time to kind of walk through this and, and teach you a bit about how spatial design would work in Bezel. So I'm, I'll give a bit of time, maybe a minute or two um, for people to get there. Um, 
I'll wait like one minute for people to kind of go to the puzzle.it and then create the account. Um, you might have to answer a couple questions just to go through the onboarding flow, but. And it'd be, it'd be great if you could let me know, uh, but when you're in this page, it may be a quick thumbs up or a, like I'm here, or I'm in the gallery page or something like that. So, so I can know that we're getting started. Okay, cool, cool, all right. Um, so yeah, you would just click on the, the bezel uh, walkthrough uh, 2.0 file here, um, just to follow along. I'll create one myself so I can, um, copy the template and the gallery and then show you a bit about how how bezel works and for, for those just checking in right now this is this is the website that you would go to cool so after a second to load yeah there's no app to download there's no you know uh, installation or opening of a code base or like your local uh, computer it Everything is stored inside this website. All right. So the first thing to note about Bezel is how you navigate around the file. Um, so you know, if you have a mouse you're working with, you could you could you, know, you could drag with the left mouse click to like like orbit around or rotate around the the space. Um, you could also drag with the scroll wheel pressed to pan. That's what I do. Um, and then you can zoom in and out by, by using the scroll wheel. If you have a trackpad, that, that's also fine. Um, you, you can just click and drag to orbit or rotate and uh, pinch and, um, and pinch and zoom to zoom in and out of the file um, and also pan just with, with your two finger or you know if you're on a windows laptop that there's also a, like a panning option there uh, you could also just pan with um uh, command and control shift click as well but it, it essentially a lot of the the navigation controls you might be used from from 2d design tools um so the first thing i'll go through is the command center so I saw that in the beginning, some of you are coming from the architecture world, which is amazing because architecture is a huge part, a, a huge part of spatial design and the merging of product design and UI design and architecture and gaming, I think is what really defines uh, spatial design. Um, and if you're coming from architecture, you might be familiar with a tool called Rhino which is what inspired a lot of the command center work in Bessel today. So if I just type in box or just B for box, um, I get this little lime colored uh, cursor and I would click once for one corner, click again for the second corner, and then click for the final time for the height of the box. So in a couple clicks, I really just made this 3D box in front of myself um, and I could also add from the objects menu maybe a sphere so if I click that and just drag on the screen I can create a sphere however big I want it to be um, same as you might expect from different design tools uh, just copy paste to duplicate it um, and if I changed the color um, copy pasting will also duplicate that too. Cool. And speaking of colors, uh, we have a lot of materials as well that you can bring into bezel if you want to portray certain objects and certain material properties. So um, you can go a, a couple different ways with this stuff. Um, you know, if you have a sphere already, um, you can pick a material from the material library. So here, if you just click on this little library icon, material library will pop up and it shows you some of the files that exist in this file already. So there's like bark, 
um, and like um, color wood that I could that I could use. Um, maybe I could use like marble as well. Um, but but of course you could also drag in like a PNG or or a, a, any other type of material that you would want as well. Um, we also have collaboration uh, features, just like how Figma would work, um, where you know I could add a quick comment here. Let me just zoom in and go to the comment mode, and I can click on the the Pikachu and say, um, "Cool Pika." And what that does is it saves a comment bubble um, right in that XYZ location in the 3D space. So if someone else were to come into this file, or if I were to come into it in the future, they can now just click on this little thing, and it will zoom me back into the camera angle that I made this comment in, and then show me the comment thread. Yeah. And then if someone else replies, you know, it, it, it would save it as a, a, a comment thread as well. So we're, we're really designing the tool to be collaboration first for spatial designers. Um, we also have animations. So an important part of spatial design is in, you know, interactivity and animations, um, which happens to be a huge part of how you interact with the world around you already. And it's you know, obviously a huge part in games as well. So if I go to the asset library, we've already provided you a bunch of default uh, assets that you can play with. So if you're into interior design or architecture, we got some furniture pieces for you that you can just use. Um, you might you know, want to use different buildings here as well. But for now, let me use something like a, a bike here. So I just clicked on bike. And if I click on this uh, podium pedestal thing again, um, the bike will drop. And for this bike to move forward, um, all I got to do is open the prototype tab, which has the lightning icon. And we'll see that um, there's a state machine for this object, right? So there are a couple states that each object can, can have inside the, the bezel file. So for the, this bike object, um, it has the base state, which is the, the state that it's currently starting from. But what, what I'll do is I will, I will hover around this base state um, button. And I'll see this like line dot come up again. I will drag that out to another state. So um, now I can choose which state this object is in. And if I'm in state one, I can drag that out and then see that the bike now has two states that it could be in um, relative to each other. So it's, it's either in the base state or the state one. And the trigger for that to happen is currently a pointer down. So the pointer down can either be just with your cursor, mouse cursor, or like a controller. You know, if you're coming from a like an a, like an AR VR perspective. Um, and so let's play that out. So we have the the play tab here. I'm just going to click on that. And the the play tab is essentially a prototyping environment that takes you out of the editor and into a prototype that you can you know, easily share with your teammates. So if I go into the the editor walkthrough, um, I can go to the animation side, the animation bookmark, and then click on the bike, and it would move. The frame rate might be a bit choppy uh, inside the event streaming, but on my side, it's like 60 FPS. You know, I just got to go in here and then click on the bike, and it'll move forward. And if I wanted the bike to come back to the base state on a click, I would just drag it again from here to here, um, the same point of down event. What that will do is that would allow me to, oops, let me just refresh that in a second. Um, that would allow me to have a bi-directional transition animation between the base state and the state one. So um, if I'm able to get to that real quick, it's going to load. I will go to the animation side. 
Oh, I'm not sure what's I'm not sure what's happening here. I wonder if it's my internet connection or something's happening on the on the back end. But yeah, I'll figure that out. But you essentially saw what what the bike did um, when it moved forward. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to point out is the Figma integration, because I'm assuming a lot of you are coming from designing a, a 2D UI in Figma. And we have a, a very specific Figma integration setting that you can access in the home screen. Um, so if you go to Bezel um, and then go to the accounts side, uh, I'll try to open that myself. Um, in the account settings, you'll see Figma integration settings and see how Figma can get integrated with a Figma token. Um, but it's, it's essentially what we would do is we would export your Figma file um, into a, a, um, a panel that can be bent and, and exported and located in various places and animated as well within the 3D world. So that, that would be something that you would be able to uh, play around with and see how that works within a spatial experience. Awesome. And with, with that, I wanted to show you how something like this would work on an example file, right? So if I create a new file here, I'll go back and I create a, let's say a V already scene. Um, I, I can add, um, let me bring in a, a Figma file or uh, like a frame PNG for now. Um, we, we also have like tutorials on a lot of how these integrations would work and I'll link them out in the end as well. But for now, you know, if I go to the, um, so I'm trying to find a file that I can add in. Yeah, so I'm just dragging in a, a PNG uh, that was exported from Figma, just a simple, um, like calendar chat uh, music widget UI. Um, I'm just gonna li lift this up here and then rotate it 90 degrees. And you'll see how this uh, body rig is faced towards the, the UI here. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to view this uh, inside the headset, just so you see, you don't have to have a headset for this, um, but just because I have a headset, I can show you what this file looks like in the headset as well. Um, so I'm just gonna go here and then I'm gonna try to share my that screen as well. Oh, let me, let me log in. Cool. All right. So you're seeing what I'm seeing in the headset. Um, I will go to my Bezel account, just do the browser in the headset. And then if I just click on drafts, it should get me to, yeah, this file that I just created with you all. And if I view in VR, I start right in front of this UI panel. And then the cool part is um, if I get here and I add a state to it, let's say, obviously a super simple uh, state transition, but let me add a, a, a second state to this. Um, let's say it's um, a bit below here and, and smaller. Um, same thing with the pointer down. So it's, it starts here and I could um, have that size as a second state. What you will then see here is that it changes its size based on my, my controller's event. So 
obviously, you know, if, if you're not working in VR today, this probably isn't too relevant for you, but it shows you an early glimpse of how you can easily um, to design and interact with your spatial um, experience through a vessel. Anyway, um, I won't spend too much time on this stuff. I just want to kind of sh show you all how it all works, uh, what I have you, but um, I could also now go into Q and A. So you know, I could you know, answer any more of your questions today. I think I saw some in the chat thread, but I didn't want to skip just yet. Yeah, there's some good questions happening over in the questions channel. Um, so if there was a question you threw in the chat um, at, that you do want to make sure gets answered, um, please make sure you put it in qu the questions tab. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for walking everybody through that. Seems like people were having fun. Um, so let's see. Let's. Um, I'm looking at where votes are. So let's start here with a question from Nevin. Um, how should we go about designing a portfolio for VR AR? When you go online, they talk about the tools you should learn, but not what people are looking for in like designs. Mm -hmm. 100%. I think a lot of this is because the industry is still pretty new. Um, and a lot of the standards for what makes a great like AR VR designer just isn't there yet, just frankly speaking. Um, so what I would say is, yeah, I mean, hundred percent on the overemphasis on the tools versus like the the skills or like the general um, perspective you would have as a designer, right? So, I would say now that you have tools like Bezel, uh, that, that there's no there's really nothing stopping you from creating a three D experience because you know AR VR is inherently three D, and you really need to be able to tailor the experience for the user in 3D, because it's not just a 2D panel just floating in front of you the whole time. Although a lot of them are, that that doesn't mean it, it would be like that for for the rest of uh, spatial computing history, right? So I think I've seen, at least for me, a lot of uh, portfolio websites where people um, embed a project uh, from Bezel or from Unity, uh, which is a bit more of a, as I described a bit more of an engineering like game engine, but people still use that a lot. Um, I would say even having good um, experience with 3D modeling with some of the modeling tools out there like Blender or um, you know all the other ones you find these days, those also help. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel you here. There is no like sort of formulaic way to construct an AR VR design portfolio these days, but I'm hoping Bezel helps. Yeah. And I'll chime in from like a, a my background has in, been in recruiting. Just my two cents yeah. with this is I would utilize your experience, especially if you um, have set up your UX portfolio or here in Design Lab, using the same principles of like what folks are looking for in a portfolio is like, why did you make the choices you made? Can you show me what you started with and where you ended up? Um, you know, if you're a UI designer, I'm going to want to see more highlights of like the color choices and the, the designs and like starting from sketches to final iterations. But if you're focusing on research, you know, again, understanding what the problem was and why you came up with the solution. So I guess stepping back and saying, what's your, your goal with like a, the type of role you'd want to get or how you're going to use your um, designs or hope to use them mm -hmm. and really helping um, a reviewer see like, not just is this cool, but like, why did you, like, how did you get here? What did, what was the purpose of this? How is it solving a user need? Does that feel right to you as well, Julian? Yeah. Yeah. Plus one on the, the importance of process, right? Because it's rarely a good decision to just do something because it's cool. It's like, well, this is the problem statement. Here are the, alternatives or the options I explored of like how we could do this. And this is why this option is the best, like that, that kind of framework I, I really enjoy um, looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great question. So let's see. Um, here's another one that's been upvoted quite a bit. Can you share a couple of examples of clients who have used Bezel and what the use cases were? Yeah. So some of the um, clients, I can't uh, show it, it, you know, like explicitly what their use cases work because they're uh, private. But we do work with a lot of companies. Um, I mean, we've also full, come full circle to work with Meta, um, and a lot of their designers are now using Bezel to design for the next OS. Um, 
we have worked with companies at like automobile uh, companies where, where they want to put together spaces of how their vehicles would look or, or even like the exhibition spaces of how their vehicles would fit into like an interior use case. We've also worked with um, gaming studios and gaming companies where before they get into and commit to a particular level playing um, game with Unity or Unreal, uh, they would use Bezel as somewhat of a 3D whiteboard um, to collaborate and design how that 3D space would look like before they just build it out in a game engine. So those are some of the, the, key, uh, the key use cases I've been seeing. But yeah, I mean, it really ranges between like spatial, like, like AR, VR computing um, to like architectural or interior designers uh, trying to have a collaborative space for their team to uh, work in or like, you know, game studios or gaming companies. Yeah, um, I think this actually leads into this next question pretty well, which is um, like what mainstream industries do you see AR VR technology um, getting into? Like what's like most uh, in the most practical manner in the next one to three years? So like where do you see this going? Um, like you've listed some that you've actually, you know, worked with with Bezel, but where do you see like the practical uses? Yeah, I think a lot of it initially will be focused around entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll probably see a lot of experiences in the apps and um, th things oriented towards um, media consumption or gaming, um, I, I think will also be a huge portion of what gets people to try out spatial computers. Just like how gaming is an important uh, like early part of a lot of computing um, cycles, I think it's gonna be similar for the spatial computing side as well, where you have people jumping in to like experience something in 3D that you just haven't experienced before with a 2D screen in front of you. And then that kind of gets you to think more about how this could also impact different industries around the world. So, you know, I think to me, uh, if this question is also, you know, it, it's analogous to asking like what industries would mobile computing like with the phone uh, impact, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, um, it took some time for it to get there. Um, and like in, in the beginning, it was just a couple apps or a couple functionalities in the phone that really got people to use it, practically speaking. But over time, it also saw a bunch of different industries impacted. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it does seem like the, I mean, the potentials for it are are fairly endless, you know, thinking about, like you mentioned, um, architectural, right? Like seeing something on a blueprint versus seeing like, ah, oh, this pillar is actually blocking this window in a way that isn't like recognizable from a 2D blueprint um, or medicine, like what might we be able to see or test or understand or practice um, as like a learning tool um, in, in the medical industry or things like that. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Great questions, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like we've kind of covered that. Apologies. Um, let's see. Are you using a game engine as a basis for 3D space, i.e. Unreal or Unity, or is this from the ground up? Oh. So and we may have covered this already, but want to make sure we touch in on it. Yeah, so Bezel is, um, the, the product itself works uh, separately or independently uh, from any of the other tools like Unreal or Unity. Um, there are ways to integrate it with the game engines, um, but it, 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 it's like, you know, it's it's a complete web stack uh, built on the browser. Yeah. Um, so similar to how Figma is a design tool built on the browser, you know, uh, but also, somewhat plays, but separate from code editors or like coding um, applications. That's a great example. Uh, <laughs> I know you mentioned using it for like whiteboarding rather than jumping straight into Unreal or, or Unity. So I'm imagining this is um, for des um, 3D designers, maybe an easier tool to get in and just start using, is that? Yeah. yeah and hopefully exactly. that's what y'all experienced when you were playing around with it today. <laughs> It, it like takes a bit of time to get really used to it, uh, like with any other tool, I, I would say. But once you get used to it, it, it really acts as like a 3D whiteboard that you can express your thoughts in and design uh, certain experiences in. And you know, that, that would be way before you get into a game engine. 
So sort of in the same vein of like talking about tools, um, somebody is curious, how is Bezel different from other softwares like Cinema 4D and Rhino? Um, yeah. And then there's a um, second question within there, but let's start there. Yeah, so C4D um, and Rhino, do they have you know their own use cases, I would say. Uh, speaking from a product like tooling perspective, I think they're a bit more on the solo player, um, a heavier side but, and more powerful side. Um, whereas Bezel is you know, on the browser, a bit more lightweight um, and collaborative uh, with, with your teammates. So you'll find that there are, you know, Bezel probably doesn't have a lot of the utility functions that like C4D or Rhino would have uh, at this time. Um, but we're, you know, we're also continuing to improve the product depending on what, what, what people need in their and their workflows. And then the second part of this question, because we did, you know, I did mention this, um, the, you know, the idea of healthcare, this person has specifically asked, how do you feel about like um, Bezel's use case in like the healthcare? Have you worked with any healthcare clients? Um, not that I know of uh, on the yeah. healthcare side. We do have a couple people developing exciting prototypes for like 3D healthcare apps where you visualize, um, um, certain organs like in the body in, in 3D that, that hospitals might do. And then they were building a, a VR app for that. Um, so, so I guess, yeah, this does fall under healthcare um, where, yeah, they were prototyping and designing an app where doctors and patients can easily experience how their, their body is looking in 3D and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, let's see. Uh, oh, let's see. Are there any designer jobs in AR VR? Um, it seems like mostly either dev or 3D modeling. Yeah, but this is a. But this is also something I'm um, seeing somewhat across the industry. I think there definitely are. Like you know, as a short answer, the short answer is yes. There are the designer jobs in AR VR. A lot of them currently would fall under either like big tech where like a bunch of tech companies are like building AR VR experiences on like hardware and stuff like that, or on the gaming side. So mm -hmm. like uh, there are, there are also a lot of gaming companies building in AR and VR uh, platforms, but whether that's like mobile AR or, or like just for the, the quest test sets and so on. So yeah. Yeah. So I kind of in that, that, oh, sorry, go for it. No, no, no. I mean, I was going to say uh, there are those jobs descriptions and stuff like what, here usually more towards developers, uh, but the, the designers also play a huge part in deciding how the end experience works. Yeah, absolutely. So in that kind of vein, what I'm hearing is, yes, there is space for it. And yes, there is a need, but there might be some um, like skill differentials or things that are needed. So this person actually has a question, like what would you feel are the required or recommended? Um, oh, excuse me. I read this wrong, but for me, what would you say um, are the required or recommended um, like tools, softwares that a designer should know in order to break into this space? And then we'll come back to this question. Yeah, I, you know, I think the the most common ones today within the, the AR VR field uh, would be something like Unity. Uh, that's the, the that's just the most common one I see across portfolios or mm -hmm. design roles, um, but. I have also been seeing some bezel files in people's portfolios, not that many, but I am starting to see some of them. Um, so that that's pretty cool. And I think it's more, you know, you don't have to learn how to C sharp script. Uh, you don't have to learn how to build something in Unity just to design in AR VR. And I think I'm trying to, I'm trying to help with that as much as possible across, <laughs> the, across the field. Awesome. So now I want to shift. There's a couple questions that are very specific to the usage of like how to use Bezel. So let's go to this question that I have up. Um, what are the required or recommended computer specs to use Bezel? Yeah. Um, we try to be accessible um, across all types of platforms and operating systems. So technically, you could use Bezel across any device that has a browser. And what I mean by that is it could be a computer, like a laptop, whether it's uh, Apple or Windows or whatnot, um, you can open the browser and use Bezel. Um, it could be a mobile phone uh, because it has browsers. You, you could open Bezel links on them and also experience AR experiences through your phone. 
Um, it could also be your headsets. So it could be uh, a Quest 2 or HTC, uh, Magic Leap, uh, HoloLens, whatnot, or now uh, soon the Apple Vision Pro. Um, and you would be able to experience Bezel um, to do that as well. Um, I would say in general, it takes a bit more GPU or um, processing power to uh, use Bezel well because there is a proportional relationship between how much like high poly 3D models and like textures and stuff you would add to the file and like the load speed and like how smoothly that works when rendered. So there are a couple like considerations there, but yeah, overall it should just work if you have a browser. Yeah, so there's a couple questions that kind of I think go in that same vein, which is um, uh, this one's a pretty easy mm -hmm. or simple one. What is the import X or what import export is possible for bezel files? Yeah, so but right now you can import pretty much anything um, in the 3D realm. So like GLB, GLTF, uh, FBX, OBJ, STL, um, and so on. Um, and also the like, images, right? So like PNGs, JPEGs, um, and you know, if you're integrated with Figma, then those could be imported. On the export side, um, we have a bunch of different file formats. Uh, you could also export to like USD, uh, GLB, um, and so on. Uh, we're also working on some integrations um, with tools like Unity that you can export to as well. Very cool. Um... And then kind of this one, again, sort of in that vein of usage, um, how would we think about the limits on number of um, resolution of assets for using Bezel, like on in browser and on different devices? Yeah. I think, so we, we haven't put in like a hard limit on, on like polygon counts or resolution uh, or like the number of assets inside the file. There is a soft boundary around like how many you can put in the file and realistically uh, practically have a smooth experience. Um, yeah, a lot of textures, it, that, that could take some time for the, the browser to render a lot of that properly. So that's going to take some, that's going to take some power. Um, I would say overall in general, uh, starting with as low poly as possible is usually a good idea um, just so you can get the ideas in. Uh, Bezel also has a bunch of primitive shapes, like uh, boxes and spheres, as you saw, just to kind of help put those very low poly basic scenes together, kind of like wireframing from a UI standpoint, um, before you get into the high poly you know, like illustrations and like textures and um, models and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. And then we're almost at time. So I want to end with this last question actually that came in, um, which is about communities. So where are some places that folks can like chat and communicate with other people who are interested in AR and VR design? Yeah. I mean, obviously we have the, the bezel One here, uh, which, which we, <laughs> uh, we generally focus on, on AR VR design. Uh, so you could just go to bezel.it slash community uh, to join that. Uh, it's just a Discord uh, server that you could join. Um, but there are a couple other ones. Um, there's one hosted by Daniel uh, Marquez. I don't know uh, if you if, if you know him, but yeah, he, he puts out amazing videos um, and like talks about AR VR design a lot too. So he has his own sort of independent uh, Discord group that, that might also be useful. But, nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, thank you everybody for the questions. Thank you, Julian, for the presentation, walking people through this. This is recorded. If you register for the event, this will be sent to you so you can reference it back as you play around with Bezel. Um, and of course, please stay in touch um, with Julian. Thank you so much again for coming and speaking with us. This was, I mean, just really cool and like seeing where things are going. I think this is super important stuff for our community to be talking about. I hope yeah. everybody has a wonderful rest of their week. Julian? Famous <laughs> <it's> last words? <laughs> yeah, I was no. like, any last words? Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, thank you all for for joining us today. I, I really am excited um, to explore this new era of design uh, with you all. It you know it really feels like when the iPhone first came out, and we we're like, all right, how do we design for this thing? Um, I mean, but like you know, fast forward like ten years, and we have good standards around how we do that. So I'm yeah. sure we'll have a similar uh, cycle of how we design in in spatial computing and spatial experiences. Um, and yeah, I would love to stay in touch, connect on LinkedIn, uh, give me feedback of what works, what doesn't work. And yeah, let's figure it out together. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, we're in the, y'all are lucky we're on the bridge of figuring all of this out together and then the systems and how it all works. So um, thank you again so much. Everybody have a great rest of your day and um, a lovely weekend ahead, I hope. Um, and we'll see you all, all next time, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. See ya.